What happens to your wonderful attitude? Your attitude was based on your wonderful job. But if you don't have the wonderful job, you have a what? Bad attitude. Because your hope is in things, situations, and conditions. Your hope is not in Jesus Christ, the rock, this foundational rock. See, your hope has to be in the next life, in the next realm, in the spirit realm. Things that you can't see. That's what faith is. Faith is the substance of things. What hope for? It's the evidence of what you can't see. Which means there's a God looking at you right now. Come on. There's angels sitting with you right now. There's a whole realm that we can't see in the natural. That's why Paul said, I'm distressed on every side. The apostle Paul, he said, but I, I don't feel sorrowful about it. He said, because you know what? The Lord is with me. Amen. Right. He said, you know what? I've been shipwrecked, beaten, naked, hungry. He said, but none of these things move me. Come on. Yeah. Clothes don't move me. My condition doesn't move me. If I don't have the food I want to eat, if I can't eat a steak, it doesn't move me. He said, none of this none of separates it. me from my love for Christ. Come on, I need you to stand up and praise God on that. Because, see, we have to understand, if we only hope She listened. She was obedient. She came in this church. She gives. She tithes. She, and you know what? Pastor told me this other day. He said, you know what? She listens. When we tell her something, yes, ma'am. Sometimes you don't like it, and the Lord said. <laughs> but she's an, a registered nurse today because she what? Listen. Laid out before God, and she knew she had to repent for something. Yeah. And the Lord raised her back up. Tell somebody she listened. God wants us. He wants us to listen. Y'all can be seated. But are y'all understanding what I'm saying? Because see, we, we think that the battles that we're in are foreign to other people. Yeah. They're not. This was thousands of years, thousands of years ago, and yet, listen. About how would David have the strength? He comes out of a sheep pen, and 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 Samuel anoints him as king, and he was like, "How cool is this? Yeah. You know, how cool is this? I killed this giant, and I'm a king." And he said, "Now go back to the sheep pen." <laughs> so where my robe? Yeah. Where is my scepter? Where is my crown? Sammy said, you're not ready, son. Go back to the sheep pen. How many times have God told you he was going to do something in your life and then he sent you on back where you were? <laughs> Tell somebody in the church said. Tell somebody in the church because he told me it doesn't mean it's time. Amen. I tell you things that don't tell you time. Amen. And see, we start getting mad at God. We start getting, God never tells us on 19, in 1982 I'm going to do this. He never. It's a rarity that God, he, he told the children of Israel that they would be delivered after 430 years. Now, that was one time he gave them a time. And they didn't even believe him, amen? Moses came to the people and said, God is going to bring you out. They said, what? Say what? And they've been prophesied this for years. Yes. Yeah. But for us, under grace, grace, and I'm so glad I live under grace, because I would have been dead. Yeah. I would have died under the law. Thank amen? you, Lord. Day one, come on, let's give God a praise for grace. Another chance. See, under the law, if you disrespected your parents, they took you outside and put a rock inside your head. Yeah. Now, children, thank God we don't do that. Anymore. <laughs> but that was the law. There was no mercy under the law. Amen. If you stole something, they cut your hand off. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. I need a praise. Come on. Under the law, if you looked at another woman and had adulterous affairs. That you would die. Yeah. And it's 
especially the woman. And we got all these people doing stuff today, and they be coming to church. Hallelujah! And God, you know what? Thank God for grace. That's what I say. Because you know what God said? I know y'all pitiful. That word miserable means pitiful. Amen. He said, we got this flesh on us. So, oh, when you get a big old raise, oh, people, people come here. Hallelujah! the position of the people of God. When God appoints people, you may not agree with everything they're doing, but you just say, Lord, I'm praying for them. I, I love them, Lord. And David loved King Saul. But King Saul was jealous of David. See, and it's so funny. People can ask you to do something and when you can do it better than them, they get mad. And the church said, Amen. King Saul went to David and said, can you help us kill this giant? David said, sure, man. I got, I got this. When, when David killed Goliath, he came back in, he was so excited. You know how you think you done done good and everybody will praise you? He was dancing. His wife said, why are you acting like that? Amen? So I said, you know, they said, David's killed. No, Saul's killed a thousand. But David just killed ten thousand. And the ladies were praising him. And Saul so, looked. Wait a minute, what have I done? Now look, David eliminated a problem he'd had for years. Uh -huh. And now he's angry and jealous because the anointing is on David. If he had embraced David, he would have died an honorable king. Uh -huh. But because of jealousy rang up in his heart, a young boy, David was just a boy, he's a man. See, we got to stop being old people, jealous of folk. Amen. I tell Brittany, Brittany and I went to some place and these ladies invited us to a tea and these ladies, they could have been more complimentary of Brittany. She was the youngest there and they were looking at her like they were mad because they were old. <laughs> I tell somebody, you were young one time, boy. Come on. When you get into a certain place, compliment, encourage the young people. Come on. All of them got me. <laughs> I said, when you anointed, people get mad at you just for being you. Oh, well, I've learned in whatever situation I am, yeah. I'm going to be content. Amen? Because I got the Lord. I got the Lord on my side. Amen? You may not like me, but the Lord loves me. Amen? Yeah, that's right. You may not. Oh. Are y'all getting anything out of this message? Amen. Are y'all in a strange battle? Come on. So what the, the main point? I want to let you know about is no matter what you thought your life would be, yeah. no matter what you envision that you had in mind for your life, it's not going to be that way. That's a very important point. It's either going to be better than you thought or worse than you thought. How many people got married and said, ooh, I never thought it was like this, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> If you single, you married, if you had a widower, I mean, I tell you, everybody, I got my ring. <laughs> Two years later, Lord Jesus. Lord have mercy, can I take it off, Lord? <laughs> and then all the single people, I sure wish I was married. I sure, I wish I was married. And then people who are married, they get single, and then they be like, Lord, I sure miss my husband. I got to clean up my own clothes and dust. <laughs> Surprised what your husband do and you don't know it, amen? Talk, let people talk you into a divorce and now you got to dust the blinds. You know what I'm saying? They didn't tell you you were gonna have to dust the blinds when your husband. Right. My mother, she, my mother was so funny. She and my dad had been married for 58 years, and when he passed, they had a wonderful relationship. He had received the Lord as his savior. And amen. It was just a wonderful testimony because he was an alcoholic when we were young, and he received the Lord. And, they had a beautiful last 30 years of marriage. And she said, you know what? I did not know I was going to miss my husband as much as I do. Because she complained about him now. Every time we go in the room, turn it, he would always forget to turn the lights out, leave the cabinets open. You know what I mean? Uh, dust up the floors, wear the shoes, all dirty shoes. And she was fuss. She said, I miss that. You know, I miss that. It's the stuff you fuss about that makes you draw attention to somebody. And that's what you're going to miss when they leave, amen? So every time Pastor wear those little stuffy shoes in the house, I'd be like, Lord, don't try to be quiet, because Mama said she's going to miss that, so I'll just say <laughs> <laughs> But it's amazing. What we complain about is really life. And, and if we're not living those things, we're not enjoying our lives, 
us, y'all. Because see, we gotta we gotta understand that's life. That's the ups and the downs. That's why you can be happy because you see the negative things, and then when you see the positive, you can be happy. So when we get in these battles, yes. it shows us. You know, you gonna have to kill the light. You gonna have to kill the brother. You you know, when you get over this, it's gonna be that. When you yes. get over that, it's gonna be this. Yes. If you married, it's not gonna be right. When you get a divorce, it's not gonna be right. When the children leave, it's gonna. Be right. I thought when my children grow up, I would be happy. Ooh, Johnny, worse than listen. I love my children. <laughs> Ricky, don't tell John this. John. I get on there and look. I said, oh God, I'm so sick of these diapers. Oh God, these bottles. Oh God, why? And now I'm like, they're 20 something, 30 years. I'm like, God, I wish they were little. I could put them in the crib and lock them down. God, I can't do that. <laughs> At least I knew where they were. Amen. You know what I'm saying? I could control it. See, I thought it was rough back then. See, you, you, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. If it's not be what? Yeah. Sad. Let me tell you, you are never going to be satisfied until you get to him. Yeah. Until you get the glory, you're never going to be like you want it. No matter what you have, you will have brief periods of joy, but you're never going to have the things that you want like you want it always. Amen? And that's why Paul said, if in this life only, if you only hope in the things that you see, if this man my man, well, you got a problem. <laughs> Don't tell me that. I know it's old. Amen. And people, oh, my wife, she's the best. I, mm, I can't live without her. Whoa, you got a problem. Ooh. Anything you can't live without, tell somebody, you got a problem. The only thing you can't live without is Jesus. Amen. You can't live without everything but Jesus. You can live without everything. Come on, you can live without everything. You can live without I was gonna be 
got a dead in a year. Pastor man, amen. 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 he's appointed. Put your hope in God. Put your hope in God. Yeah. So let's stand on our feet. Yeah. Let's give God a hand praise. Yeah. Let's tell God I'm a hope in you today. I'm not gonna be sad about my life because I got health, amen. I got strength. I've got a life to give and worship you with, Lord. That's why He made us. He made us to worship Him. He made us to be excited about Him. He said, I created you. You when I made you, Sister Samika. He said, I wanted you to teach Sunday school all those years. Amen. All those strange battles she had. She came to this church and said, Lord, I've always known I was supposed to do something. You know, she said, I'm supposed to do something. Amen. And she said, and I, I just never got it until I got here. Amen. But that's what those strange battles were about. Amen. If you in a strange battle today, tell the Lord I thank you because you trusted me. You trusted me with something. You're taking me somewhere. Amen. Else. Don't worship anything but God. Amen. Yeah. Let's praise God.